Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at Pyre from Supergiant Games, uh, makers of Bastion and Transistor, and this is sort of their newest game, and it's uh, it's kind of a bit of a departure uh, in some ways, and very much in line with that, so let's hop in. Uh, let's see, where am I at? So, this is sort of the hub area, uh, your wagon. Uh, I'm with the Nightwings uh, team that is trying to go through the rights, which is sort of a competition to get out of the, uh, what they call the downside, I think it's called, uh, which is sort of an exile, a part of the world where they exile people to and they're not allowed to return, depending on their sentence. But I think many of them are life sentences. But some people manage to survive uh, long enough to find out about these rights, which we found out through the Book of Rights here. Uh, which, that's a really cool effect. Uh, and I think I still have a good ways to go, just because right here's the first chapter of this book. And I still have seven eighths to go uh, and so far it's been pretty neat so we're this is kind of all just lore uh, I think so I, I'm supposed to be able to okay no never mind and here's more and you can bring up just actual text instead of just reading this sort of uh, ancient font uh, and this is sort of the the unofficial logo of the whole rights thing. Uh, we look up to the stars, and that tells us where the next thing goes. Uh, right now, I have a crew of five people for the rights, which we'll get to the rights in a little bit. Uh, a headwind is the first letter is right up here. Uh, Jodariel, Ruki, uh, Shay, which uh, when you come up with her. Uh, you can name her. I think there's a bunch of different names. Uh, a lot of rhyming with A, like this. Uh, I think they're all legit. I think it's really up to you to name her. Uh, and this is uh, Tizo, who is a drive imp. It's really weird stuff. There's these imps that apparently help uh, push the black wagon along. And so they hang out here. You can kind of mess around with them a little bit. Uh, I usually come in here. Oh, you can turn on music. Uh, they're supposed to be having a lot of... Okay, nothing for now. Uh, and this stuff is also representative of people that are on the black wagon. So you can see, okay, this belongs to the lone minstrel, Tariq. Uh, and sort of see, oh, he's keeping quiet. Uh, this is Jody's throw rug. It says she is foraging outside. This is Headwind's cooking tins. It says he's out for a walk. And here's uh, the Greentail family portrait that has a younger picture of Ruki. Uh, it says he's nearby. That sort of stuff. Uh, so we're going on to the next leg of our journey. Uh, I've been through three parts of the rites. Okay, so come down, you find Headwind and Jodariel assessing the current situation with the minstrel and what's cool is to have these uh, these highlighted names and uh, nouns and such and you can sort of go here and say okay Joe Dariel yeah she is the resident of the downside she's this person so if you forget names or you're just learning this stuff for the first time you can sort of put names to faces and learn more about the the lore of the world uh, the only downside is you can't there's no there's no like encyclopedia or anything like that to house all these terms just in case you need to come back to it. Uh, are you most certain? I like, no claim the journey shall be pleasant, but it is necessary. Headwind motions to you as they continue talking. Seems to have some work to do. Once we arrive in flagging hands. So flagging hands is... Oh yeah, this is where we have to go to next and nobody is looking forward to it uh, on this journey, so... So flagging hands is up here, and occasionally when 
you are going through the world, you get choices like, oh, you can go to this part of the area or you can go to this other part. they will tell you, oh, hey, this person is suggesting you should go here. Uh, but yeah, the Long Mistral knows a safe route down into the Flagging Hands region, which maybe I found he escaped. He was in the, the Black Wagon. We're going to just keep going. Uh, he was in a Black Wagon, just silent. Uh, and uh, he disappears uh, fairly recently as far as where this is taking place in the storyline. Uh, so we had to search for him and I picked potentially the right path to go to find him. So there could have been an instance where I did not have him yet. So uh, we'll get choices here. Uh, but for now we get uh, the ability to Okay, I guess nobody's here to talk. As is Teasel's nest. So he is a drive imp, but he's a special imp who can actually be in our party, knows the rights, and is able to participate. And this is Shay's scribe catcher. Uh, yeah, not much going on. I like to uh, clean up and turn off the candles because there's lots of hay and such uh, that catch on fire little bit uh... oh yeah they have button shortcuts to this stuff see how it says press triangle I just hit that so I did not mean to do that uh, yeah there's thick and foul the pit of Milleth so let's see that's where the next right is going to be uh, it's a feta den in which the witch Milleth uh, Sealed the physical form of Yslotch Astralborn. I don't really know who that is, but that's uh, a mythical figure, I guess. All the way across the marshlands on the coast. Reader. So we know how to read, and apparently that's illegal in the the main society. Uh, I, At least I chose that the, I could read. But maybe I would have been forced to do it anyway. Uh, would you join me in the wagon for a moment? We had a matter to discuss. Okay. I really like some of the, the cool stuff to this, like how this uh, little dialogue thing just moves as you go over it. Uh, exchange looks, and she turns to you. Go see what he wants. Okay. Oh, what's this thing? Thank you for your time, reader. I have something for you. On behalf of my client, before you is an artifact called the Beyonder Crystal. What is this? Uh, it's an ancient artifact connected to the rites. So the reader manage in your eyes. Present the crystal only then. Okay. So he had this quest, I guess. Uh, observe a shimmering crystal. Yep. You're confront during the rites. She'll stop it. Nothing to prevail against you. Prepared for this for quite some time. The Beyonder crystal may help ensure that you are well prepared in turn. Is a resource now at your disposal to be used at your discretion. Gaze upon it and you shall see what I mean. And Fort, you may use the Beyonder Crystal. So, like, okay, let's take a closer look. Uh, some of your senses fail, though you retain a hold over your consciousness. Ooh. Clad in the raiments of the right. I think it's raiments? I've never had to say that word out loud. Uh, so we're seeing a phantom. You're not a total idiot. Okay. Yeah, so the Night Wings is what our uh, triumvirate is. Uh, but where are my manners? Sandra. Sandra the Unseeing. She's a wraith. Spell for attorney within the Beyond a Crystal, bound to serve the rites. Oop. We met bef briefly before, when you first beheld the book. When you were stuck inside of it, I was among the phantoms, you companions, your companions banished there. Okay. Voice. What is the voice? I'll cause you during the rites, reminds you of your exile. Along with any idiots whose freedoms happen to be intertwined with yours. If you but take advantage of my services. 
Scribe trials. Okay, these are going to be like custom trials. Okay. Like challenges, hey. Avail ourselves for practice rights. Should you be so inclined? Okay, so I guess we get a chance to ask her something. Uh. And then break from the monotony of staring at the void within this place. <laughs> and I have to say, the art is just gorgeous in this game. There is. There aren't very many games out there that come even close to this. Like, the Banner Saga is one that comes to mind as being in some comparison to this. Uh, let's see. You're all sick of one, of one another. Okay. So there's other people trapped in with her, but she is tired of talking to them. Okay, so let's uh, let's try out one of these scribe trials, and I can show you what the game. Uh, the main part of the game so so now we get to pick amongst our crew uh, as you can see here there are stats up here quickness is obviously speed uh, glory is how much damage they do to the pyre the pyre has a hundred points to it so like rookie here does 15 and he's a smaller uh, smaller person uh, hope Okay, that affects duration of banishment, so if he dies during battle, that's what happens. Uh, and this is how big his aura size is, which is not too big. Uh, Shay here, see she has more glory, so she does more damage to the pyre. She's a little bit slower. Uh, and I have a, a talisman here that gives him plus two quickness. Uh, so he is even faster. Uh, Hope, so she is... Okay, so she her respawn is a little bit slower, uh, but her presence is bigger, so... Okay, he's ineligible. Shea and Tizo are ineligible. But yeah, he's not that fast. His glory is pretty small, like uh, Ru Rookie's. His presence is pretty big. Uh, and his hope is a little bit slow. But uh, I've also leveled him up a bit, so there's a bit of an RPG aspect to it. Uh, okay, I guess I can only take one person. Okay. Uh, so yeah, there's inventory for these uh, talismans. You can buy them from uh, a merchant uh, when they level up. You can fill out these trees. It seems like four upgrades, so I basically went to this final one and said, okay, which one of these do I want to do? Uh, because as far as I can tell, you pretty much only have enough time to do one of these. Uh, so for him, I'm like, okay, a, uh, a double jump or a triple jump even. Well, he can do a double jump now. Uh, third time, that seems like a really good thing to have for him. So he'll be fast and able to triple jump. Cassandra. Okay, for Rookie. And he did the summons. Alright. Yeah, so curs are kind of dog people, as far as I could tell. Like I said, this is one person uh, pyre match. So what's the big idea, huh? This is a... Okay. So these are the, their sort of rights outfits. So he's no longer uh, in his dog form. He's got a mask on and the, the outfit and all that. Uh, let's see. 
little stubby little paws. So this seems like a good training match, okay. I was wondering if we we're gonna get anything like this. Oh three on one. Oh, and done. Alright, so he's done 30 damage. Okay, what? These words are things? Boom. And normally if you have three people, that person is banished. Okay. So he's real fast, so he can run around these people. Looks like they have lowered. Oh. Alright, so he's going to be back in time. So that's like an attack I can do. Uh, I hold down circle. Uh, if I do it at the right time, there's like a flash. That's like when the perfect time to attack. Uh, he can obviously double jump there. And there's a whole thing where you can jump into it to jump over people's potential attacks. That wasn't too hard. Uh, but Rookie wins. I mean, it's one really fast uh, player against three others that are slow. So that is what Jodari out looks like. That big slow uh, sort of tank looking thing. You did not do it on your own, despite having to face my demon friends all by yourself. And you love your reader. All right, so we passed. So that's a bit of what it's like, but it's three on three, and there's strategy elements to it. Uh, and you can set difficulty early on. You can make it really easy if you turns out you don't care for it or you're not that good at it. Uh, Joe Muir's Fang. So Joe Muir is the last place we were at. Uh, okay, that's it. After Rookie casts his aura, it lingers longer than usual, 200%. Okay, so we got a special talisman for him. Uh, I like the one I have. Okay, so seems none of your fellow exiles worthy of her time. Okay. Yeah, I think we're okay. Yeah, I could do that uh, temporary, the, the practice trials, but we'll be doing an actual one pretty soon, so no need for that. Um, I do like this, like you can click on stuff that's very Hearthstone, Hearthstone. Uh, I imagine that's probably where they got that uh, from. So yeah, did he get any? No, he didn't get any XP. Okay. Uh, no, he just got that uh, talisman. That specifically... Yeah, so that's that aura cast. It lingers longer than usual. Okay. I think I get what that's going to do, but I think we're ready to move on find everyone is feeling rather miserable. Yep. Only Tizo seems unaffected. And I like to get some flavor text here of like, oh, Tizo is the venerable drive imp who seems to know the ins and outs of the Nightwing's Blackwing. He's the only one that can communicate with you. Oh. We lost one hope. So there's some things like that. So if you go, like when you get choices to go uh, to one area or the other towards your next journey, uh, you might get bonuses in those ways. Or uh, So, moment readers, several courses may take through flag hands. Yeah, he's presenting us. So we got two, a couple places we can go, and they're going to lose some sort of stat. Okay, we can get a valuable item if we take a job here at the cold moat, okay? Uh, Headwind suggests taking this faster route will reduce your companion's loss of hope. Uh, okay. Uh, and the little minstrel says you can improve a talisman if you take a job here. I think this might be the best one. I'd be interested to see how 
sort of a new game plus of this goes. So there's a job here that we can do. Typically these are automatic, but I don't know. Sometimes it's there's an actual thing to do. Lost one hope. Suffer alongside them. Speak out directly to the living shade. Be true to your heart when responding to its inquiries. And make no attempt to look it in the eye. Okay, that's a weird thing to say. Cold mode is the north route through flight hands. Crosses a mass grave. Okay. Even a thorough burning failed to cleanse a certain haunted air here. Yeah, and here's the downside of S. Purgatory to which the Commonwealth casts its convicts and its enemies. None have ever come back from the Forsaken Land. Okay. Oh. That's what this is. Dead. Barely see it. Does not speak. The book that you possess may lay some of the fallen here to rest. Oh. Turn through the book locating passage concerning freedom and spirit. It is draining work. As you two hollow stump, then fades away. I found a Nox shroom. Okay, so we can sell this at the slug market, which is the vendor that we see on occasion. And so we're going over to the next area where the rites are going to be held. By the time you reach the pit of Milithy, Milith, uh, seems to be feeling worse than before. Oh, we lost another hope. Okay. So we can commence the rites. Uh, this means there's somebody that wants to talk. Okay, Jadariel. Steel gaze well before you turn to her. Now that you are here, are you afraid of me? You had never before met someone like her, but you know something of what happens to those who remain in the downside for many years. And so this is sort of what the dialogue trees tend to be. It's like uh, two main options and then something where you can say nothing. And it kind of, I like that it gives you extra context of what you're saying. This so is like, from what you know of her thus far, you sense no need to feel afraid of her. Whatever she she may be getting at, you think it best not to indulge her at this time. I don't really feel afraid of her. You tell her that, although you do not know yet know each other well, you do not fear her, and on the contrary, feel safer in her presence. Uh, you shall fear me yet if you survive this place. Now then, I shall go make my rounds. All right, we gained uh, one hope for Jadariel. I also call her Jody. Uh, the Book of Rights is shaken, but I want to show you one more thing here. Uh, so, here's like their quick like biography it gives you an idea of what their cast, jump, and sprint are like. Uh, so he runs much faster for a short time uh, during his sprint. Uh, his jump, high jumps to evade, uh, and you can learn like what sort of race they are, about their past. So. We know he was an outrider, which we learned is uh, those who served on the blood border were taught to always watch the skies. And his crime, desertion. So he fled the blood border's north front without leave and did not return. Uh, alleged motive, insurrection. So they thought he would uh, wanted to give away secrets to the enemy. And he's been exiled for five years. He's, it's a life sentence, so... Uh, let me learn more about the characters. Some of these, like, I don't know, yet know what her crime is or uh, astral sign or anything like that, so. And yeah, the astral signs are sort of like our astrological signs. So he was born on the 29th of 7th moon, suggesting he is devoted and faithful. So it gives a little bit of personality uh, to it. But yeah, you get chances to actually talk to them and learn about their personality or their history or stuff like that. So this is the next page that we have, I think. Uh, I think it is. And so yeah, it's not long before the Emperor begins to crumble, Empire begins to crumble. And yeah, this is a story about, uh, in the words of Gol, Goloth, 
Golothanian. Some weird names and such. Uh, the Master General. He's one of the the eight scribes. Uh, so yeah, I'll definitely go back into that a little bit later on my own. But yeah, there's our crystal. Gotta clean this up. Constantly cobwebs or spider webs or whatever you want to call them. Uh, yeah, we'll move on. Uh, we can go over to the slug market. Oh, hey, you guys, you know, this place, a lot of folks, but not a lot of customers. Know what I mean? So have a look around. <laughs> so I can click on him to make him Ugh. go to sleep or not. I don't know that it really affects anything. Uh, these stardust... Uh, okay, pinch and dash. Uh, it raises the rank of the talismans, which can improve whatever sort of stat they're uh, affecting. So we have this Noxroom we can sell, so we take it over here and sell it. So now we have 73. Uh, what can we buy here? Not really much. So yeah, I think these two have been here. Yeah, so two bonus damage is not really much. Maybe if I get some dust and rank it up. Uh, but this seems like uh, something important. The scribe rock. An ancient bit of tough bedrock on which the scribes themselves once must have tread. So presence will increase that, uh, that little area of effect they have. So I think we're good. And so I can go here. So you see presence. Hers is 23, the biggest by far of the group. And so I could give her that, but I also have this on her. So after she banishes an adversary, that's when you run into them with that ring around them, the presence. Uh, they die, or they get banished, and they're out of commission for a little bit. And since she has the biggest presence, there by my logic is she should be the one that has that. Somebody doesn't have anything. Oh, Tizo. He's I, he's got a big presence actually, so that might actually be a good thing to have. Uh, he I like his sprint. He just hops around. That's sort of just what he does. I already told mine. Okay. Commence the right. Uh, as you make preparations for the coming rites, you wonder if the stars above will even be visible through the dense fog hanging over the pit of Milleth. Then, okay. So this is how they do his dialogue. He makes these noises. And then you can look here. Okay. He seems to be very concerned by something in the vicinity. Occasionally when you go into these rites, uh, lead up to the rites, uh, battle, whatever it is. Uh, maybe one person will be like, listen, I don't want to be a part of this one. Uh, please leave me out. He was issuing a warning. Makes quick note of several hiding places among the nearby crags and rotted husks. Something about the place dampens your sense it your senses, all you feel is a creeping dread. Okay, so this is our next uh, group. A writhing shape slides forward, its hulking form draped in ravens. So I kind of wish I had the previous uh, rights match uh, queued up before this because it was uh, some former, compa uh, former companion of uh, Rookie or some sort of uh, acquaintance. And he was like a dog dude that uh, very much his theme was rock. So it was just constant guitars whenever he was around. He was like an overbearing rocker dog thing. Uh, why is it you to hide yourselves from us, little night wings? You trespass on the resting place of the astral born. So see when the stars muster the courage to eliminate this place. Bog Crone, so a serpentine creature native to the Commonwealth's southern bogs. 
widely feared. Okay. A witch, Old Melda. She's an ancient witch with an unhealthy obsession for you slotch, the astral-born monstrosity. Oh, the withdrawn. Okay, this is the group we're going to be facing. Compelled by sinister forces rather than by freedom. He has no love for her. She cannot harm you bodily with her, but it's not taking any necessary, unnecessary chances, so... Alright. So it is time for the rights. I do kind of like that design. There's a bit of a... Oh, we almost did the... The traditional sort of star shape, but then it kind of made it Rita. takes a right turn right at the end. Made it all the way to the detestable pit of Milith. Milith okay. In doing so, of course, you have disturbed your ancient adversaries, the withdrawn. The deranged witch who leads them has big plans in store. Should she prevail in all this? Now, as you know, I normally would wish you a shameful defeat. But in this case, I wish you a little bit of luck. So yeah, I know Logan Cunningham is uh, does voices for this game, much like the other two games. I want to say that is probably it. He's probably the announcer for all the matches. So I have not picked out anything else that could be him. Uh, yep, the crones, these are companions gathered by the pyre. That shall never warm me here. Okay. Stressly described in myths and ballads, the thought slain by the eight scribes. Okay. Listen here, you. Scare you any of us one bit. You or your buddy, you slotch. You slotch? I don't know how to pronounce that. Okay. Uh. Oh, that's not a pleasant. That's a good reaction to that. So he is probably bitten off more than he should have. Okay, so there's their group. Who shall conduct this right? And so nobody has stepped up to say, hey, we do not want to be here. So I think that might be a good sign. Uh, so yeah, hope is in the red. It means everybody is not a huge fan. I think speed might be our best chance here so I'm gonna give uh, she's our first choice Shay uh, Tizo Tizo yeah, look how huge that is uh, and Ruki I mean he got us in this mess with her very well. Uh, you don't suppose that Crone's got it out for me, do you? Well, no, you got it. So I shall find ye and devour ye. Okay. So now here's the match. So I'm going to pause this just a second. This, the way they set up these matches, uh, the way the, the arena is set up, it reminds me of American Gladiators, that one weird game where uh, the guys took their ball from their sort of thing and tried to get around a gladiator to the other side and score but this is like three on three that so it's not just one gladiator where they're kind of on their own halves of the arena that's what this is all about so now now begin we can pass it back which they can go and oh crap i messed that up that's his there we go he sacrificed himself. Boom! Scored. He's fast. 
but now he's out of stamina. I'm curious. To... Boom. And so yeah, when they score, they're out of it for the next one. Though there, I think there is talismans. Uh, one thing we can do is throw it. So now that one's gone. Boom. Away with them. Boom. We scored. So I haven't used Tizok very much. But yeah, he hops. Oh crap. Boom. Get them. Hmm. Oh crap. Yes. Killed her, but now we're both out. Boom. Boom. Right in there. So far, I haven't had any trouble. I'm on the normal difficulty. I think there's one harder. There might be two harder. Okay, yeah. So we've trounced her. Now she's created these little acid pits. Yeah. Best beware of foul sources. Oh crap. So they might actually score here. Or not. Oh. Oh crap. We're both out. Oh crap. They're just throwing it in. And you throw it in, and obviously nobody took it in, so nobody dies. So yeah. Quite the turn of events. And so yeah, when you're right next to your own people. Boom. Uh, ten more points so anybody can score for us. Now go on just once more. Oh crap. Tizak, just stay here and play defense. Boom. Yeah, so he sacrifices himself. Crap. Uh. Boom. And we win. All right, trophy. Wings once again prevail. Their adversaries prove no match. Yeah, that seemed like a good move. All speed on this. The right is ended. Describes the vanquished. You slouch, just we prevailed tonight. Okay. What is he saying? Praises everyone's courage against Ludmilda. Just a bunch of hissy talk. Alright. Oh, don't. You stupid idiot. Ye shall be consumed, and everything around ye, from the soil to the stars, ye shall see. Okay, so everybody gets XP. Obviously, the people that played get more. Uh, Shay has leveled up, so we get a chance to. The whisper to me, they do from time to time. So she's a very weird person, as they describe it. Uh, so now we choose a mastery, and so we gotta choose uh, if Shay's banished while jumping, she shall instant ret instantly return at the origin of her jump. Uh, grasping the orb, Shay sprints and jumps without using stamina. Oh, that's, that's a huge one. If she's sprinting, when she has the orb, okay, I'm gonna go towards that. Reef charge up time before Shay can cast her aura is greatly reduced. A devious trick from the okay. And Tiza, Tizo, uh, all right, he's doing pretty good, so. Uh, we're good. Turn to rights, position to exiles, near, each, near to each other, now shall link auras. Yes, yeah, so that's when those auras grew as we got closer to each other. That's what that's talking about. Uh, yep, would be the withdrawn. Oh, you know this has the most recover. Okay. Had enough. 
Ud Mildes. I don't know how to pronounce that really. Yeah, Jody. Oh yeah, we gotta figure out where we're at going at next. The Sea of Solace. A possible oceanic expanse pockmarked by crew little islets. Islets. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh north and west from here for untold leagues. I cannot tell you when last a vessel dared to sail those waters. I'm Robbins. I was trying to get you to come look at something outside the wagon. We got out. All right. Let's go head out and see what's going on. Can you not read the stars yourself, then, Mr. Mistral? You know, can when it comes to Miche. And so when you start up, uh, you're just kind of this uh, weird. Uh, just body that's in this like desert-like area that gets picked up by these uh, by Ruki, Hedwin, and Jodariel. Those are the first three, uh, and you get to choose whether it's female or not, or just don't acknowledge it. Uh, and that can be changed at any point. Actually, it's in the settings. Uh, options right here, gender. There's actually an X. So if you just wanted to use gender-neutral stuff, they thought that thought ahead of that you can change difficulties as well uh, heightened reduced okay it's just a three yes yeah, so that's tougher that's easier if you just want to go through the story uh, all this sort of stuff you can have it hurry text if you don't care about the story I imagine that's good for uh, the second time uh, but yeah I turned up the cursor speed a bit here she is, in fact, yeah, now it's fast as hell. Uh, thank you for fetching her. Okay. Okay. Let's seek now our destination. And so here's the night sky. Uh, there's no zoom outs, but there are these stars that are Sort of when you're born under this, this is like the astrological sign. Those born under it are ambitious, although discontented. So I don't know what these all pertain to, but you can sort of just look at the stars and admire this beautiful starscape. So I think this is the one that helps us determine. These are the ones we were looking at before. Uh, yeah, this one wanted to go to Jomir. This was the one we just decided on. I guess was the one that we went to first. I think this is where... Or, I don't know. Those are those are the four places I was at before, so... Or is the Azure Star burns bright over the ruins of a lost frigate in the Sea of Solace. Boom. Okay, that's, that's a very weird thing. Still further north towards the middle of the Sea of Solus. That's not good. Right out into the water. Yeah, so this is a mysterious informant we know of by name, but not anything else. West of here lies a place called Big Bertrudes. Uh, at the edge of the sea. Okay. So, a companion of his. Okay. So, now we have our next place to go to. Uh, but we got somebody to talk to right now. Okay. The lone minstrel wants to talk. Should not keep you long. Sure. Let's uh let's hear what you have to say. Matters pertain directly to the rights I must reveal to you alone, for thus I am obliged. Confronted the withdrawn and Admilda. She t she tended to invoke a certain name. Yeah, East Slotch. Nonsense. 
they first found themselves here on the downside, the land was even less hospitable. The greater titans, colossal monsters that once roamed the downside. Okay. The scribes together slew them one by one and through this forged their bonds. The scribes managed to feed it. They later used his own hide and ichor to bind the Book of Rites. Oh. Seems to be incapable of death. It's starting to sound like uh, Cthulhu or something like that. Its vow is to devour this land and everything in it. Only then can it return unto whatever plane that banished it to ours. So it's an exile. Okay. That's not very comforting, but hey, whatever. I suspect we're going to come into contact with them. Oh, I'm just trying to turn off this, uh, this candle. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's go on to, let's continue our journey and sort of see where this goes, and I think we'll wrap this up pretty soon. I uh, just want to give you guys a good look at this game. Sort of the various progress that we have here. So, here's Big Bertrude's. Alright. Shadows, you can feel their eyes surveying everything. <laughs> Ooh, that's not a good look. Speakest of the past, and what doth he yet live? Cognabinitus. My very faith that I stand to what lives. Walking wood beyond the waters. Labyrinth of a forest on the western half of Black Basin. Okay. Turn it on, that is all. Devaros. Comment. Barosta Sare. Get her retirement. See you, Tanta. Okay. Okay, so we got uh, a vocation, which means we've got time to hang out with people. Uh, we can either just forage for resources, which gives us more stuff to sell. Uh, we can study uh, the rights with one of the other people in our party to increase their XP a bit. Or we can... Uh... Oh no, this is what that is. Uh, on your skills as a reader to grant small global bonuses to your fellow exiles during the rites. Uh, I've been tending to do this. I only had the ability to do that one other time. And uh, I think it was Ruki that I did it with. I'm not sure why there's this green bar. Uh, but let's talk to Hedwin. 
sit down with Headwind to go over some of the subtler aspects of the rights, the state of banishment, how to return from it. And so now he's leveled up. So is that green bar? I'm not sure what that is about. Just the stuff of stories. Okay. So now he has the ability to upgrade. Uh, when power casting, Headwind's aura travels in a wider, longer line than usual. So power cast, like when that, uh, when that cast that I do stretches out, there's a point where it flashes if you least let go right at that time. As a power cast, it's like a more powerful form of it. Okay, so when he jumps into adversaries, he banishes them instead of the other way around. Yeah, and so this is why I'm going this route uh, after Headwind douses the adversary's pyre. His pyre recovers equal to up to 50% of damage dealt. So he does 20, so we would get 10 back to our pyre should it take damage. So far, it's not been too hard. Uh, I've won every match pretty much handedly. Most of them have been perfects. Uh, there's one or two where I uh, did that thing where everybody died uh, and left the goal, the, the pyre, alone. So they got like one token goal right at the end. Find you early the next day. Alright. Let's check out the new wagon. Whoa. This place is cleaned up. Hull is fully sealed. Force and all manner of nautical equipment adorns the port side. Maybe big trip protrude. <laughs> Tell him also to come and visit us again. I'll be gone from here and tell no one that we were paid in favors. <laughs> This is so exciting, I don't know how to swim. Oh. What's Tizo saying? Okay, he's in uh, Shay's boat. Alright, set sail, and I think this is where we will bid you adieu. Uh, so yeah, thanks for tuning in. That is Pyre, it is out on Tuesday, July 25th. Uh, 20 bucks. Uh, by the time you see this, you will still have about a day to pre-order. Uh, so definitely get that in. It's 10% off, so it's 18 bucks to pre-order. On PSN, uh, Steam, I assume, has the same deal. Uh, it's out on Steam as well the same day. Uh, and so far, it's been really quite good. Uh, I really love the art style, and, uh, the animation and all that. It's really well done. And uh, the rights are pretty fun to play. Uh, I'm sure if you are thinking uh, there's a versus mode, it seems to be only local. Either versus CPU or friend. Uh, and uses characters and locales from the campaign. So I can proceed. And no online play. Tool tips. You can pick like random themes, uh, songs from the sh from the the game. And you hear a full set of opening remarks from the commentator or the the narrator, whatever. Uh, you know, the preset preset masteries. Okay. Uh, you can turn on. Exiles, so this is separate from the story mode. And so yeah, there's a bunch of other stuff there. Uh, about, uh, yeah, they got the soundtrack. Uh, it's going on Spotify, I think, maybe some other services. Uh, you can also buy it outright if you want. Uh, here's the people that made it. Yeah, Logan Cunningham, I'm 
curious if I was right that the narrator for the rights is Logan. Uh, because as you s might have heard, a lot of the dialogue is a made-up language, essentially. Uh, but yeah, that's been Pyre. It's been really good so far. Uh, we'll have a review in the next day or two uh, from when you're watching this video. I just have to put more time into this uh, before I can uh, write down my thoughts and all that. Uh, and we may have some more Pyre uh, stuff going on in the sites uh, soon. So stay tuned. And uh, we'll see you guys again next time.